Org mode is a really great tool. I use it a lot for writing technical documents. I use it for teaching, and I've been working on ways to help students learn how to do things. Uh, there's no substitute for reading the org manual and, and just exploring what, what's possible, but when you first start, that's a pretty daunting task. So I thought it would be interesting if we could find a way to get org mode to tell us what can you do on a particular element. So for example, we're in a headline, how do you know what's possible to do here? How do you know that pressing tab is going to do something and how could we get org mode to tell us? So the idea is to use org element context to find out what element you're on uh, at the particular point and have that give you some hints of what kinds of things can be done. I also want to make this possible for users to add to that because the it's not possible right now to discover all the things that can be done on a headline very easily and there ought to be some prioritization of what things are, are commonly used and what things are less commonly used. So what I want is a function that I can run at point and it will give me a help buffer that shows me what element I'm on and give me some information about what to what to do there and maybe even links to get to other pieces of information like the org manual, etc. So we look at that uh, here. So the first thing I'm going to do is, is create a, a variable that is where we store the user contributions to this documentation. This will just be in org files that are automatically created when the user asks for them and they will put in their notes there. I'll have a function that returns the, the user documentation. So type here is going to be an uh, org element and it's just going to return the contents of the org file and add some strings uh, on the outside. So we'll put user documentation. Here we get the, the contents of the user file. And we'll add uh, down at the bottom here something that will eventually allow us to edit those, uh, those notes. What follows here is functions for each kind of element that I want uh, documentation for. So for example, if you're on a LaTeX fragment, um, this will just say we're on a LaTeX fragment you can toggle the overlays. This is syntax for the key bindings, and this is syntax that makes it clickable uh, to get to. And then we'll add uh, details about the face, uh, just for fun. And if it's available, we'll add user documentation. And this will all get returned as a string that gets rendered in the help buffer. Okay, for links, we want to provide information about the link path, the whole link, um, here you can have uh, clicking will on the link will run run this. Let's make these lowercase s so they're not in quotes. And information if you're on an image, you can toggle the links. Uh, here we'll have a, a link to the org manual on hyperlinks. And down here we insert uh, details on the face and the user documentation for links. Okay, from here down is basically just that for different uh, org elements. Uh, I have different documentation if you're in an org source block header. And if you're in a source block, this will give you some information about default headers since it's usually not obvious what those are. Down here we have some information for the source blocks. Uh, if you're in a headline, at the beginning of the line you may get information about the speed commands. Otherwise, you get information about how to change the visibility, how to change the to-do state, how to change priority tags. These are all common things that I do. And with a timestamp, similarly, you can change the date with the org shift commands. Here are things that we can do in tables, inserting a row, inserting a column, plain list, items, keywords, paragraphs. Those are the main elements that, uh, that I've provided help for uh, at the moment. Now what we need is the command that we run uh, at the point, and I call that command ORE here. And this will just open a help window, figure out what element uh, is, it, is at uh, the point, and then figure out what function would be called to get the help for that. And if it's bound, then it calls the function Otherwise, it says no documentation found and inserts the uh, user documentation for that particular uh, element. OK, 
Okay, there's a couple of special cases uh, that I, I look at. Um, if we're in a source block, then we, uh, and we're in a header, then we look at S as being the, the source block header code. If we're in a table, we use the, the table, table row, or table cell. We use the same uh, function for all of those. And similarly, for a LaTeX fragment or environment, we use the LaTeX command. Okay, so that's what it does uh, for the most part. There are two more details I want to talk about, and that is we're in a help mode buffer, but I want clickable links so that you can open your user documentation file and so you can open the face file. So I do that with font lock. I just search for uh, li special links that have this form uh, file colon, and when those are found, we add a property on them to make them clickable. So we just set the mouse face uh, we change it to the display to user documentation and make it clickable to open uh, the file at point. Similarly for the face link, uh, I hacked this to make a clickable uh, link to open the face. So we find out what the face is and we just call a function that calls describe face. Okay, I add a hook so that we can um, have this load every time we get into help mode hook. It just adds these keywords and, and says how to, how to fontify it. And finally, we add a little menu, uh, which you'll see in a moment. Okay, so let's run this. And here's an example uh, where I can type alt x o r e. And I find out that I'm on a site link. The link path is given here. This tells me what happens when I click on the link. This tells me what happens when you export it. And if I'm on an image, here's the key binding to toggle it and you can run this command. These are all clickable, so if you uh, look at that, you can see uh, what happens. Okay, so let's go back. Let's see, there's one other uh, thing. We can click on the org ref site face, and down here is my user documentation, some other things that I've added uh, in here. And you can edit this by clicking here. This will open my file, and then I can uh, delete this since it's already there. And if we go back now to, to run that, you'll see that it's updated. So that's no longer there. If we look at a headline, you get information. We're in a headline. You can cycle with this, uh, the to-do states, shift left, shift right. Uh, this tells you all of these things that you can do. This is a face org level two. You can edit the user documentation there's none defined right now, so opening this will just create a, a new file for me. If I run it again, at the beginning, it says that I'm at the beginning of a headline, and here's a, obviously a typo in, in the documentation. That should be a, a slash. But it tells me uh, what we can do, and we can click on the info link here and go directly to it. So this works for quite a few uh, of these. Uh, if I'm in a table, I can learn that I can move uh, from cell to cell with tab. I can use all of these different commands to, to do different things. And even at the bottom, each one also shows me how org mode sees the particular element. So if you're trying to figure out how to access a particular piece of it, this would be a helpful tool uh, for using it. So that's basically uh, the main idea uh, that we had in, in looking at this. Uh, here is, let's look at this. I'm on a LaTeX fragment. This tells me how to toggle it, CXL, and it should add the, the fragment right on top of it. Here you can see uh, how it's constructed. If I'm in a org mode source block header, you can see uh, what the default headers are by clicking on this. These are my defaults uh, in here. And if we're in the actual source block, then it tells me that I'm in a source block. This is how to execute it, how to tangle it. We can edit it with Control C uh, Prime. And of course, you can click on a uh, info link here. These are some things you can do uh, with the timestamp. And again, here are all of the, the details. 
So that's basically it. Uh, the idea here is you, you remember one command, ORE, maybe bind it to something helpful, I don't know what, but it tells you what, what's possible uh, to do and allows you to add your own uh, documentation so that it's easy to remember what you want to do uh, in the future. So I think an idea like this is, is pretty useful and uh, it'll be interesting to see how it evolves. One thing I, I noted in the, in the post is this is all done in a help, help buffer which has some, uh, some benefits of being able to leverage the help buffer functionality. The disadvantage is uh, that I had to hack my way through getting clickable links on some things uh, because they're, it's not an org file. So it would be interesting to think about doing this and just generating temporary org buffers uh, so that you get the full benefit of org mode in the buffer. Um, but doing that actually requires that you have the Emacs context help that I've posted uh, earlier so that we can do things like this where we can just mouse over it and see what this thing does, click on it to get the documentation, etc. So this is not a built-in feature of org mode. This is something we have to add also through font lock. So getting those functionalities is basically choosing which font lock functions do you want to develop. That's all for today.